All right, good evening. Java Asyncs, it's Sunday night here at the shop and we are starting week three in asynchronous Java Online uh, CIT 111 at CCAC. So I'd like to do some updates of where we are and then show you a new structure I set up for work submission and then uh, preview on module three and then finally some notes on contact. So thank you for your patience with our little false start with REPL. I once again intended that to be uh, less troublesome than it was. Uh, I balance asking students to install a bunch of stuff up front and uh, part of me wants you to get coding as soon as possible and I, I didn't hit that balance right. So I saw that at least 25 of you had successful screenshots, meaning that you got NetBeans on your system and you got NetBeans plugged into the Java compiler and runtime system. So remember, NetBeans, not Java, but rather a tool that lets you interact with the Java system inside your computer. So that's why we had to do two separate installs and then link them together with that environment variable. So uh, good work on that. Just a, rem a reminder on work submissions, if I jump over to our screen share here. So I, um, I appreciate you making it into our schedule as most of you did and we can see uh, each other's work here on uh, week two. So here's the OneDrive. Once again, remember I will never ask you to use your last name in submitting anything. So the best way to submit work is just use your public first name that you registered on the first week and make sure that you let that make it into your, your, um, your capture names or your file names. So some of you uh, maybe just got a capture.jpg up there and I can find, I did some poking through and find that some of you have a username listed here that automatically gets put into your file so I can try to figure out who you were. Um, so that's uh, a workaround if you didn't get your file name in this initial submission. In the future, just throw your first name in there and then as long as your first name is unique that you registered, then we're in good shape. So nice work on that. The work survey is what I've implemented for week three and going forward. So the way that you'll tell me that you're done for the week and you have wrapped a bow on your learning for that sequence is this weekly work form. And it's a Google form. My goal here is on my website is always to allow you to do as much as possible without logging in. So that means that we don't get dependent on CCAC stuff and their IT infrastructure uh, to the extent possible. Blackboard uh, is uh, much too time consuming for me to use and Google Forms is great. So once a week, I'll ask you to just submit this form. Tell me your first name, and then check off any modules that you worked on this week. You can submit multiple. Uh, so if Loretta's submitting it, uh, she uh, worked on, picked up chunk two and then our uh, chunk one, mod one and mod, <laughs> chunk one, mod two, chunk one, mod three. And I put in the next question as a reminder that my encouragement for you is to focus on blocks of time of low distraction for working on Java. And that is a recommendation that comes out of my experience learning to program myself and teaching other students to program, which is our uh, brains are surprisingly one-tracked. They're very good at switching between tasks, but ultimately your brain is a single core processor. And so when you sit down to work on Java, I would invite each of you to think about what are your top distracting elements in life, whatever those might be, electronic or otherwise. Maybe it's the space you work in. Maybe you need to have a separate location that when you're there, it's Java time and your brain thinks, oh, this desk, this table, Java. Um, as the language process gets focus, you'll find that you can remember more and more as you work as your focus time during practice increases. So I just ask you to select one of those or describe it to yourself or describe it in your own words, how you would characterize your work for the week. And that will give me a pulse on your own work and the class, as well as a reminder for you to cut down on those distractions. The enemy to focus 
is, I guess, by definition, distraction. The next question in the submission asks you to total your time working on Java this week. You can quantify it however you'd like. I do this for a couple of reasons. The first is to prepare you for the consulting or the uh, freelance world where you will be expected to bill to your clients at an hourly rate. And so when I submit Java invoices for programming Java for my clients, I have a spreadsheet that I have date, time, start, time end, and then the activity specifically that I worked on. And I do this down to uh, plus minus uh, uh, one quarter hour, so uh, 15 minute increments. And this is a very common practice in the world where someone's hiring you to do a job and you can exercise a lot of creativity over when you do it and how you do it. And so they'll often be requiring hour logs. And so this is another encouragement for you to dedicate specific time to Java and then your brain starts Java, you work for a period and then you stop and do something else. And tracking how many hours of that you do in the week would be a good exercise for you. The other way it helps me is to norm across the class. Some of you are coming in with more programming experience where you can write the same amount of code in quite a bit less time than someone that has less experience that has to work quite hard um, to get to that level. So this uh, requirement will ask you to submit that time, but I'll keep it confidential. It's not part of our open course system where I will be sharing your uh, anonymized grade proposals and midterms and finals. I may uh, ask you at the end of the term if you want some summary statistics on total time put in, but it will never get attached to your name. It will never be shared out in any form uh, insofar as I can guarantee with the tools we use. So. That's uh, not something to be scared of, just something to be aware of. And the next phase of the question, this is a little bit crude, I know, but I'm, uh, for the next couple of weeks, I'm going to ask you to just dump in the code that you wrote into this little text field. And so you can jump over to your NetBeans and whatever code you're working on, just grab that entire class, all the file in any given class, and dump that in. So if this is what I worked on this week, I would just put my cursor in there. I had control A, we'll select all, and then I'll just drop it in there. Um, uh, let's see, let's try that one more time. I'll just drop it in, let's try. NetBeans, come back, okay. So here's that, control C, and then let's hope that that's gonna paste in. Uh, paste, okay, there we go. Um, it should copy okay. So notice here, I'm not doing a very good job of commenting since this was just my sample, but this is where you'd use your first name and you can say work uh, in your comment. This is what you'd actually do in NetBeans. So let's do it here first. So we could say um, class containing my, containing my practice for this week in Java online at CCAC. So, can just grab um, all of that, copy, and then let's just drop it back in here. And then I will, that'll give me a sense of how much code you got done. It'll let me read it quickly. I'm at the stage now where I don't need to uh, compile intro Java code. I can kind of read it and figure out where you are. So that's what we're gonna do until we get a more advanced uh, system set up, which we have on the schedule but I don't want to overload you with tool setup here at the beginning when we already spent a week just setting up NetBeans. The last two are optional. If you have questions that you'd like me to address, what I'll do is I'll look at the responses to this survey uh, on our Sunday broadcast like we're doing now, and that'll give you a chance to communicate with me via that survey. I'll just pull up the responses and read through them on the air. And then the last question is a suggestion comment box. So if you have ideas, small or large, please share them with me so that I can try to bake them into my ongoing revisions. So you'll submit that once a week. I allowed you to submit, let's go back here. I allow you to edit your responses uh, after you submit. So total time. So Lou spent about uh, three and a half hours on NetBeans config. Okay, that can be a beast, so don't be afraid of that. Um, 
and then I'll go ahead and submit. And so if you miss, messed up, you can go back and edit and it should not be requiring you to sign in as you do this. So I posted that on the, the schedule for the work product for this week and next week. And then we'll see where that takes us. On week five, I'll invite you to start putting together a Git repository where you have the chance to build a tool designed for sharing code. And then I can see it and other people can clone your code in a formal uh, software transfer way rather than just dumping into a Google form. So that's it for uh, procedural updates. I'm gonna ask you this week to, if you didn't get module two uh, because of repl.it being a mess, you might wanna give this a, a chance. So this is showing you how to take code that might exist on GitHub and then how would I get that to work in NetBeans? And so we have to think carefully about how we name the files in which we put the code. So this module will invite you to run a sample code from our repo. Um, I'm doing facelifts on my modules. So I'm moving from the old looking modules like uh, this one that I haven't updated from uh, 2018 and the current module week uh, two and or module two and three, I've given a facelift. So I chopped up these big long pages into little buttons. If you're the printing type, you can hit single page. It'll put it all on there, but it was just too overwhelming to have a thousand lines on a single page. So what I'm gonna invite you to do is jump into module three and start with your setup. It'll tell you how to set up a project. Your NetBeans is working, so your screenshots should look just like mine. I will be moving through these modules and starting to in inject um, the laying nine references, which I haven't done since this is the first time I've done online in a while. So I just did it in person. So uh, this will invite this module will invite you to work through uh, two core um, kind of informational ob overviews, and then we've got uh, two practice sections, and then this mini project at the end. Uh, I put a note, it's a somewhat more complex set of steps. So what I want you to think about with our Java class is I don't want you to feel rigid about all these assignments and no panic should be involved in, if you spend you know, three, four, four hours on getting all the way to that road trip exercise and you are spent and, it, it, and you can't wrap your head around it, note that in the weekly survey and, um, and try it again next week. So. I realize that some of you are coming in with high school experience, some of you have worked on computers in other contexts, and some of these concepts will just come faster. So don't stress, uh, let me know how you're doing and that'll help me calibrate uh, where, we, where we go in the future. So that's it for module three. And then finally, my last note for the week is contact. So as, if you look at my schedule for teaching, I am a busy beaver for the first three days in every week. So I teach uh, six different sections over the course of three days. And so your chance of getting hold of me anyway, email or phone on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesdays are gonna be rather limited. The ripe time would be to jump into my office hours on these times. These are dedicated periods for questions. So uh, the five to six, hopefully can catch some of you after work hours and uh, the middle of the day ones for those of you that have uh, days open in your schedule. So the best time for calls if you need help is Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, and Sunday as I work on the next week. So that's uh, be my suggestion. And just remember my phone number is down here under contact. It's this big, bold number right down there. And with that, I want to just remind you that uh, the programming process I hope you'll find um, enlightening in that the concepts we're working on here in Java are cross applicable to every other computer language that you're likely to encounter. The fundamental control structures, variable types, methods slash functions, depending on your language, these are all design concepts that apply to software across languages. So Java is a great companion for this basic intro learning that we're doing. And hopefully you'll enjoy it enough that you'll decide to continue on with object oriented one CIT 130, and then the third course, CIT 244. So hopefully I'll be scheduled for both of those in the future. And I hope you have a great week. Have fun with Java. See ya.